Hey guys, so my shipment came in from Engineered Marine Coatings and I have here what I think is the Genius Bucket with uh, the blue top coat that I'm going to use to paint the hulls. Alright, so this is what should be what you would receive when you order the Genius Bucket. So let's see what's going on in here. So this is really the main middle step. Bucket. Genius. Alright. So this is really the genius bucket and I ordered a color called Palmetto Pride. That's kind of a dark blue. Let's see what's in here. I don't really think the bucket is of any real value or use, but whatever. They've got a gimmick. Um, okay, what do we got in here? Cute little rubber gloves on top of a nice mixing cup, which also seems to have some of those blue rags that you would use for wiping on and wiping off the cleaner. A couple little baby uh, mini roller trays, which is funny because I just went and bought more of these today. That's okay, I'll use them for the primer. Uh, okay. Cigar roller covers. So a pair of Scotch Bright pads. All right. Surface prep cleaner. Very important, right? First step. Polyurethane activator. And then we've got some little things here. Oh, yeah. That's a core of Palmetto Pride. Beautiful. Some cardboard. More Palmetto Pride. That's it. Just a half gallon, apparently. One roller handle. These little cute rollers. <laughs> Alright. Brushing reducer. Also used when you're rolling. That's kind of important. second brushing reducer and then we have pre-taped painters plastic this comes in handy when you're trying to mask off big you know large areas that could come in quite handy and then besides cardboard separators we have some instructions printed out here which I'm sure will come in useful so that's really it this is your there's our friend Einstein. This is your genius bucket. So we're doing a color change on the boat. It's a white boat and we're gonna make it a blue boat. And we had to go with a gray primer because we don't want any of the white to show through. So we have to go with a bit of a darker primer. All right, let's get ready to mix up our first batch of Palmetto Pride. Alright, so while I open this, why don't you tell me what our first step should be? Mixing. Step one. To two parts quantum base, yeah. slowly add one part quantum activator. Ah, okay. So, so you start parts. with the base and then, then you put the activator in. Okay. Alright, so we're going to mix up 24 ounces. I think we're going to do 20 ounces. Okay, so 10 ounces of this, because it's two parts of this, right? Alright, so I've got my ounces. Okay, 10 ounces. Okay, and now you're going to add 5 ounces of the activator. Activator. Okay. 5 ounces of activator. 
that'll bring us to 15. Agitate with supplied stir stick to ensure complete mixing. Okay. And once that's mixed, we gotta wait five minutes. Oh. It doesn't say how long to stir for, but I guess just complete. Be yeah, careful not to whip it too much because you're gonna want to see where the 20 mark is. Mm. So smart of you. So we're not painting the whole boat underneath, so obviously we taped off where we think a good line would be, visually. Um, we also taped off a two inch mark. We're gonna have a white stripe and that goes down both sides of the hulls. There's a few high spots that we found on the boat, which is why it looks like there's some white marks. But if you run your hand down it, it's pretty smooth. So we're not really too worried about it. So this boat has a bulkhead right here, which is sort of why you can see this crazy dip. So, you know, it kind of drives us a little, a little batty, but it is what it is. Luckily when the boat's in the water, you probably will never notice. A lot more high spots on this side of the boat, but whatever. Okay, now that you mix the two to one base and activator, you're going to slowly add one part of brushing reducer and mix thoroughly. Five ounces of brushing reducer. Mix enough paint to work down one side of the hole at a time. They suggest 16 to 24, so we did 20. Show them how stupid the paint tray is. Oh. Well, the next step says wet out supplied EMC roller by dipping it in the tray and then squeezing it back into the reserve. But, like, you can't, there's no dipping. You have to, like, the tray's too it small. It's so stupid. Nice job, guys. Some genius, right? Some genius. It's very thin. Mm-hmm. We'll put it all in here. Yeah, might as well. They say the best way to do this with rolling is to lay down some about your shoulder width and then work it. Square up with it, work it, long strokes if you can, and really stretch that paint. You really got to stretch it out. And work it, work it, work it until you can get it as flat as you can, and then stop. So the first coat goes on a little bit more thin than you would expect. You kind of can see some of the gray beneath it still, which is what we're aiming for actually. It's a little tricky because it's actually really thin. So you have to really roll it out to try to avoid things like where it builds up. Where did this bug? Buggy. There's bugs everywhere.
coat. Well, a beautiful finish of my first coat of blue. Didn't last very long. In the process of sanding the entire boat down again with about 220 grit sandpaper for a couple reasons. Uh, first and foremost, because I can't do subsequent coats, you know, at four hour intervals, um, I always have to wait, you know, at least until the next day just because of my schedule, my obligations with work and with the fire department and, you know, social and family commitments, that sort of thing. I can only come down here for a few hours at a time, so I can't paint more than once per day. As a result, I have to sand down layers of paint in between coats. That way it gets a good mechanical bond and it ends up ultimately looking very nice. Uh, but a couple other reasons actually, I'll show you why uh, I have to sand this whole thing down probably every time between coats. Okay, one reason is roller marks. Some of this is probably correctable by uh, better technique when rolling the paint, but I think it's kind of unavoidable at the end of the day. You're going to get some roller marks when you're not spraying a boat and you're just rolling the paint on with a foam roller. So sand that out so we don't end up with any sort of pronounced ridges in the final paint job. Second reason is while I was doing this side of the hull, the foam separated from the hard plastic hub of the roller at one point and I ended up with all these little raised speckles. I have no idea what they are, but they are a result of that foam roller coming apart. So I need to sand those little bumps off. Another reason, since I'm painting outside, Mother Nature seems to want to step in every now and then and throw some insects into the paint. So they end up causing little defects in the surface, so sanding will take care of that. And then really the final reason is because I'm painting outside and it's actually quite a bit warmer than ideal, as I got to this end of the boat, the paint actually started to thicken up pretty well. And as I was painting the bow area here, looking at the roller, it almost looked like there was a blue mist coming off the roller. It was like the paint was actually drying in the air and it was kind of wafting off like cotton candy. And while that looked really cool, it ended up sticking to the surface of the hull and I ended up with all sorts of little raised bumps and defects here. So I need to sand all of that off as well before I go and put the next layer of paint on. So lots of good reasons to sand in between coats. Well, here we are once again sanded down with 220. When I painted, I started in the stern and went towards the bow and it's pretty obvious that the stern had a lot less paint on it. So as I was making my first pass, the paint got thicker as I got closer to the bow. And that's probably because it was about 90 degrees outside and just a little too warm to be doing what I was doing. So second coat, I'm gonna start at the bow and work my way to the stern. And even though it feels relatively smooth to the touch, you could still see marks. I really can't feel this, not much. I mean, it's extremely subtle, but I sanded it down and took the glaze off and I'm gonna try to not worry about that very, very subtle pattern that was printed on there by the rollers because I know that subsequent coats, I'm just gonna lay more orange peel type patterns on there with the rollers. So I think that'll have the effect of pretty much smoothing out what's imperfect at the moment and just adding new imperfections as I go. Net, net, it's gonna be imperfect. couple thoughts about the high density foam rollers which are supposedly solvent resistant. The ones that came in the bucket. This is the second one where the roller has come off of its solid plastic core. And since I ran out of those, I ended up rolling the starboard side of the boat with foam rollers that I got from Home Depot. And I actually think that those rollers gave a better finish. They hold a little bit less paint, but they seem to leave less pattern on the overall finish. So 
here's the transom, if you want to call it that. It's all sanded down, scuffed up, and ready for a few coats of paint. I'm going to try doing this with white paint and no primer, because the manufacturer says this type of paint can be applied very successfully without primer. So we're going to see. I'm not going to paint everything else white above the rub rails at this point. I'll do that at some other point, little by little. But at least get this part ready, and I'll paint it at the same time I paint the two transoms of the hulls. Around what's going to be the white stripe, I put a thick border of blue tape, and then the edge itself is made up with a thin piece of yellow tape. That one I can strip off between coats and reapply. Up here, we decided to add an additional white stripe above the blue just to kind of carry the theme through from what we're doing along the bottom there. For today's fun, I ordered more paint from Engineers Marine Coatings. Basically the uh, chemical portions of the Genius Bucket minus all the other fun doodads. So I've got two quarts of base, white, I've got a uh, solvent reducer here. I've got a uh, surface prep cleaner. And I've got two of these polyurethane activators. So basically the same stuff I have in blue, but this is white and uh, I'll be mixing it with the same ratios of two to one to one. I'm gonna prep the stripe for a second coat. I used that yellow tape for the edge and you can see there's a lot of areas where it bled through underneath the tape. So I'm gonna probably take care of that with the 220 as I go over this. I think I'm gonna use blue tape for the edge today when I mask that off again and hopefully that'll hold a tighter edge. Okay, I have everything sanded and rinsed down, waiting for it to dry so I can retape all these lines. I hit it with 220 and all the areas, at least in the top line where there was bleed through, I went and sanded it down and that got rid of it pretty nicely. But anyway, we're about ready to put the second coat on. Got everything scuffed up, cleaned, masked off. Went with the blue tape from Scotch with edge guard for the edges I care about and just regular old yellow masking tape for the ones I don't care about. Meaning and white. all of our coats done so we have a blue boat Woohoo! it's so blue <sighs> it absolutely pains me to do what I'm about to do but I've got to remove these roller marks before we clear so a light sanding My first pass is very light. It's really intended just to identify all the marks, generally in this case sewn as vertical marks left behind by the roller. 
then I can go back in and focus on all these areas and continue scuffing up the entire hall. Hopefully the uh, clear coat takes away some of those scuff marks. They told us that it should work. If not, I guess we gotta buy more blue paint. Um, but I think it's pretty much ready for its clear coat. <sighs> You're really good at washing stuff, baby. Yeah. I wish painting the boat was just easy. Still have a few more hours of sanding to go. Delightful. Final hand sanding. tell that the paint is well scratched and ready for clear coat partially because there's no place where the water beads up it's just sheeting off and then eventually drying up so that's a good sign sophisticated measuring techniques mm -hmm. two to one Oh, very nice, Bobby. Thank you. So today we're doing a little bit of um, the final touch-ups around the boat that just got a little blasted with the sanding. Um, and then we're going to let that sit for a little bit and then we're going to clear coat it. So we can see uh, Duke over here with his fine artist skills. Little touch-ups. I think we're expecting to have a little bit of roller marks, but hopefully a lot less than what you see now so I'll show you so you can kind of see there's definitely some clear roller marks and this just happens so it was a little inevitable I think we're a little disappointed because everything we read about this was that it's pretty self-leveling and that it's gonna look exactly like if you would spray the boat but obviously not because you got some really obvious roller marks it's really kind of annoying put a lot of work into making it perfect so we're pretty upset that it looks like there's a lot of streak marks still but um the clear coat is supposed to make all of that sort of go away um i don't know i guess we'll have to just wait and see but at this point we're just going for hot from far away or a, as duke like to call it a 50 footer so from 50 feet away she's gonna be beautiful you know we'll see we'll see Okay, we are ready for the final step in changing the color of our hulls. Everything is taped off, everything is cleaned, and we are ready to do our clear. And hopefully, all these brush strokes or roller marks, all what remains of the orange peel, which you can't feel, but you could still sort of see, hopefully that'll all just darken out and you really won't see it anymore. So here's the clear kit that I got from Engineered Marine Coatings. I forgot that I ordered extra six and a half inch cigar roller covers these are the ones i got from home depot here and uh it's funny how these ones are marked six inches these are six and a half and uh clearly they're the same size and i can also see these rollers have been around for a while the foam's slightly yellow much like the tips of these ones this is another pack that we bought. They are pure white. So, they yellow with time. These are clearly a bit older. No big deal. We also have some more activator, some more reducer, and ultra high gloss clear top coat. This looks like piss. Robin, this question is for you. Is this really just piss? It's the same ratio as the paints, mm -hmm. but it sure looks thinner. thinner. Yeah. Oh, that's the ticket. Sideways pour.
final strokes of clear coat going on right now. Epic. Well, I think we're done for now anyway. Let me show you what we ended up with. Definitely to the positive, putting clear coat on did restore the nice deep blue color of the base coat that we originally applied and then sanded down. So that's good. And I think the extra effort was worth it sanding the base blue and then clearing because it did eliminate most of the roller marks. So that's good. That's not to say that it eliminated all the roller marks because there's actually some roller marks in the clear itself, which will probably be evident once it all dries. And that's too bad, but at this point, I think we're just gonna go with it and put the boat back in the water because it's high time we get this boat sailing. And then just a note about this paint itself. I think it's good, high quality paint. My only real complaint about it is it's supposed to be self-leveling, especially the lighter colors and certainly the clear. And my observation is, even after I rolled back over and the surface was very smooth, it seems to actually be self orange peeling because it would then sort of just constrict and end up into a very consistent orange peel pattern. And I guess a consistent pattern across the boat is better than something else inconsistent, but it is too bad that it does that. What do you think, babe? Is she a 50 footer? Yeah, she was pretty hot from where I was. Don't get too close. She's, she's sexy though. She's got some flaws. Yeah, but you know, the, the sexy ones always have some hidden flaws. But you know, like everything, you sort of have to try it for yourself to see how it comes out. So we did, and now we have a blue boat. Almost, almost have a blue boat. <laughs> you know, we're first-time boat painters, so what? What? You know what? Do we